Hello there guys, my name's Kermit the Frog and welcome back to another episode of DA Spotlight! Yay! What the fuck am I doing with my life? So, uh, welcome back to another episode of The Spotlights. If you guys do not know what that intro is all about, you obviously did not watch the stream the other day, which is available to view now. Go and check it out, it was weird. So, uh, today we are looking at the IMDC M71 Rhino Heavy Siege Vehicle by JD Hawks, and this thing's actually pretty cool. If you guys don't know JD Hawks and any of his builds, go and check them out because he has a lot of builds on the workshop that all revolve around the Interstellar Mining and Defense Corp, which is a really, really cool name, as well as the ships being just genuinely really cool. And uh, Sid Crafter, one of the subscribers to the channel, actually asked if we could, if I could show some um, decent rovers or land vehicles that roll around and this thing is pretty cool because it does have the ability to be picked up and carried away by a landing craft so you would have this larger vessel that would come down and drop this off onto the planet and this would basically be used as some sort of mobile base for troops and perhaps exploration parties so it's a really really nifty little craft has lots of lots of nifty little features and uh, I'm going to take you through them. So just to point out, it's armament. It has two missile turrets, two Gatlin turrets, four interior turrets and one rocket launcher. And it is built pretty well for smaller crafts to land on it because if you notice you have this large back section and it's all very open. So this you could perhaps put another car on that could perhaps jump from the top down. Or you could put a uh, sort of an attack uh, reconnaissance flying vessel on the back of this and basically send that out ahead of you. And then you can pick up on enemies and bases and whatever else and perhaps plan to attack. Which is a nice little nifty feature. Now, we're going to have a gander around this. Now it might be a bit of a short spotlight but uh, oh well. And what we might do as well is we might take it up that mountain because... Why the hell not? It's an all-terrain vehicle. So we may as well test its all-terrain capabilities. So, let us jump on. Now, to get onto this craft, you have this ramp. Now, the only issue I have with this ramp is it does sit very low and you can just walk up onto said ramp and get onto the ship from land. But one of the main issues is that catches on um, the floor. So if you are going all terrain, you might catch that and you might get yourself stuck and you might beat yourself, which isn't a good thing to do, especially if you are perhaps being chased or you need to get to a mission objective really quickly. So that's that's my only little point to hear. However, it is only on one side, so I guess you could probably wiggle it loose with the gyroscopes on board and whatever else. But uh, we can walk up on here, and again, it's very convenient place, so we can just uh, walk up and onto it, which is quite nice. We do have a turret here, which is great for defense to stop people just walking on. However, I do think a um, a safer solution is needed for something like this, maybe a piston-operated um, sort of lift or something could be built into this but i quite like it i like it and i love the color scheme for this ship as well because a lot of people now are actually pick, picking up on the um on the on the color schemes and if you notice like people are actually starting to color certain parts of the ship different colors to everything else so like the oxygen in this craft is blue and you have white white ceilings gray walls and stuff like that and it's like very very nice and i like how people are being brave with their colors now which is great because i never used to be like that i never used to be like oh let's throw a bit more a, a different color into the mix but having two colors really doesn't do a ship justice anymore you really have to mix it up a little bit so i like it now we do have a staircase which takes you up but we're going to go through the lower decks first and if we actually head through this door directly in front we have um, sort of the timer blocks, program blocks and uh, production facilities on board. So we do have some um, arc furnaces here which we can produce iron with. There is an assembler here so we can, this is like the hub of your production and we can close this door off if we want and this will oxygenate 
and whatever else, which is good. I, I say that, however, it doesn't appear to be doing that at the moment. But a uh, little bit weird. So, let's open this door back up and we'll head on to the rear. So we open up this door, we then head into the back section, which we have med bays and oxygen, and we also have some cargo containers. We also have a nice screen here, nicely laid out to show you how much ice you've got, uranium, rockets, basically everything that you're going to need on this craft to survive. So, you know, he's, he's picked up on um, a small amount of items. However, I think you could utilize this screen a bit more and maybe add on a bit more information, like power inputs and stuff like that, just to, you know, so you've got a bit more of a better idea of what the hell is going on in the craft that you're actually running around on. So, we'll close that up and we will head over to the other side, which is just blanked off. However, there is also a turret matching like the other side. Again, my only issue with interior turrets, and I've already mentioned this with other ships, is you can't convey them. And that's a problem for me because you can't sort of rearm them very quickly. You have to physically go over to them and throw more ammunition in. But I guess if you're returning firewall and this craft sort of hidden behind this barrier here, I guess, you know, you, you'll be helping it out, destroy its targets, and you'll probably be a bit more accurate as well than the AI. So, you know, it, it, it you know, I, I don't know, it, it weighs itself out quite nicely, I think. So, let us head on up to the top. And this is where you've got that big landing deck. So we have two large turrets up here, two large Gatling turrets, just to provide some support because this is a big we we sort of weak point for the ship because if a, if a if sort of a bomber say comes flying over you want to be able to return fire at it quite quickly because this back section blow it up and you've got your cargo all underneath this and whatever else i also have noticed i don't think this is heavy armor i think this ship could do with heavy armor on its um, sort of roof section, if that makes sense. Well, some of the blocks are a little bit dinked up. But yeah, these are light armor blocks. So I think maybe this could do with heavy armor on the top because this is like the diff this is like the critical layer between your men and the, you know, the outside world. I, I really do feel like it could it could do with that extra armament and plus it's a landing deck so you're gonna get lots of thruster damage like I just proved there you've got damage on the top so maybe convert this out to, to heavy armor it will help with the um, you know the damage issue when a ship lands or dinks you know when it lands on this ship and then also incoming bombs you're protecting the layer below you with all the critical components in so maybe that's something to take into account with rovers when you guys build your rovers because again that this 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 pad will be used quite extensively when it's in operation so this will be like you need this to be very hard wearing that's what i'm trying to say so we've got these very nice archways that we can pass through and we get here to the antenna which is nicely placed a little bit Open so that that could get damaged quite easily, but I guess I can't I, don't, I can't really see you putting that anywhere else unless you were to have a rotor to a um, Small block or a small head and then have a mini antenna on there. I actually looked at doing that with some big Rovers in the past it works, but it's just trying to get it fit in you know to fit in with the build and you know Maybe maybe that's an idea because they give off a good um a good range and then you can have the long range still on here but if it gets damaged you've got a backup maybe that's maybe that's something to take into account we then also have large uh, rocket or well, missile turrets which are very very useful because these would give your most defense because these things would provide the heavy damage to any incoming crafts as well as just be generally useful because they they are the, the you know the, they are the hammer they are like the sledgehammer on this ship and they will absolutely nail anything that comes into view, I guess. So, going under here, we have this nice sort of doorway section which we can pass through and we can close that door up. And we actually have the, the sort of the cockpit here. This is like the bridge. And we have some nice use of um, coding here. So we have um, this, which just, just states if anything's damaged. So it tells you if the reactors are damaged, the weapon systems are damaged, or the suspensions are damaged. So if you do take any damage while um, driving over terrain and your suspension gets damaged for whatever reason, you can see that from this screen. However, it's not exactly visible, but I can see the the sort of what he's tried to do. He's he's given you this nice sort of I don't know, 180 view 
out of the windows and sacrifice sort of having too much displayed in front of you. Which is, uh, I can live with that. You just have to get out and have a look. But then you've also got the co-pilot here who I guess if he's, I can't actually V into that which is a bit weird. Um, but if you're sitting there you can glance over and tell the, the, the driver if there's any damage. Um, we then also have the speed at the bottom which is kind of obscured a little bit which, I don't know, doesn't really bother me too much, but maybe could be a little bit better. So, driving this thing, we're in the cockpit now. We have a couple of cameras as well that we can use, but I'm not going to use them at the moment because we don't really need to. Uh, there is a, um, a front, a... Uh, is that front? So have front view, front view, weird, and then the rear view. Okay, so we have two front views and a rear view. I don't know. A bit strange. Then we have four, which is the rocket launcher, which fires from the front, which is a great um, attacking weapon because you might need this when you're charging a, a, fort, a, fortifi a fortified thing. So if you're attacking a base or something, you can drive at them while still shooting and getting direct line of fire at them, which is quite nice and interesting to use. Of course, it does... Um, it does fire and depend on the land. So if there are any bumps in the land, you might catch it. Like here, I'm not. I am firing in the general direction, but occasionally, um, some of them may drop a bit lower than others. And again, you might catch them on the terrain, which might be a bit annoying. So then we have controls over the turrets, which we can turn on and off, which is just like a standard control nowadays. We have the LCDs, which we can kick start if we really wanted to. We then also have the suspensions, which we have control over the um i'm guessing these are like the frictions and whatever but uh yeah and then what else do we have we also have control over jumping into the turrets as well which is good so let us have a drive we're going to hit p to take the handbrake off and we're going to pull off so we do have um steering um from the mid section and the front section for maneuvering this the ship now if you did just notice i hit the ramp off of the floor and uh yeah, a little bit of a nuisance, but uh, what we'll do is we'll try and push on with that ramp. I think if you harden up the suspension enough, you would probably avoid hitting that on the floor, but I think even with that, going over bumps, especially with that midsection being the bit that would sort of you'd arch the ship over to get over a big bump with, um, you know, it, it, it just gets in the way. So that may end up breaking off or I may take it off because it kind of frustrates me a little bit. <laughs> So, let's try and push up. Now, um, we can increase, I believe this is again the, the power, is it? Let's roll back a little and get ourselves a nice straight run up. And we'll also increase uh, on the four as well. We'll go to 60% and then we'll increase the power. So actually, we'll decrease power, decrease power, increase friction. And we should get some nice movement here. Um, we did just take a little bit of damage. Hmm. Let's, let's waz it up a bit more. This may be a bit reckless, but I am just purely going to sort of get up some speed. 60 kilometers an hour here. There we go. Bit of speed. And we get all six. Now we are rolling back because, of course, we are bouncing. There he goes. There it goes. It was taking damage for all that time. And we've kind of beached it again. Weirdly enough, the friction's just dropped to 59. It hasn't gone to 60, it went to 59. That's strange. Whoa! Whoa. The whole ship pivoted. I think it would help if you actually had gyroscopes on this because uh, you, could, you could wiggle. I know it sounds a bit cheaty, but you could wiggle. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of wiggle. See, so I'm struggling on that section, on that on that rock. Why? I'm actually completely stuck. Is this space engine is? All right then, let's prove a point. Let's prove a point. We're gonna jump out of here. We're gonna get a gyroscope. We're gonna slap two gyros on this thing and watch its all-terrain capabilities come to life. There we go. There we go. So now we've got a bit of wiggle. We can maneuver up things, which is something I, I feel this needs. It doesn't need like a lot of gyroscope maneuverability. You only need like one or two for a ship that weighs like what, 
three hundred, nearly four hundred thousand. So, I mean, yeah, this this does it now. It works now because I, I do feel like even though yes, technically this this is a car, it shouldn't have gyros on it. I feel like it really is necessary because it gives you that wiggle. Because look, I'm I'm conquering this. I'm a mountain goat now. I am the goat. I ha I am I'm channeling the goat right now, and we're just gonna wiggle and press forwards. There you go. Is it gonna stop? Are you gonna stop? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm gonna take this one, and I am gonna drop it on this one because um, things. <laughs> So it's gonna see how well they do with the collision. Probably not that well. Probably sink into the floor like everything else. Whoa. Or that. Uh, or that. Everything exploded. Nice. Okay then. So. That was the IMDC M71 Rhino Heavy Siege Vehicle by JD Hawks. Admittedly, I mean, with a few tweaks, you could make it so it could probably conquer any sort of a, amount of um, hills and mountains. And again, with maybe a little bit of gyroscope power, you'll get that, that you'll get that wiggle that will enable you to get up steeper inclines and stuff. I actually quite like it. It was smooth, it worked um, to some extent with the, again, with driving, and I like the way it looks as well as just its general features with the guns and the armament and again it works i like the fact it can be dropped from a dropship which is a nice feature it's you know that that that's something you don't normally see on a big vessel like this and it is cool to see that so yeah if you guys have enjoyed this go and check the build out on the workshop the link will be in the description below if you guys have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and of course if you're not subscribed subscribe now and uh yeah i will see you guys later Peace.